This is a Chinese LED home theatre projector which uh, some poor sod purchased off of eBay for well on the package it says 430 US dollars the current going rate for these seems to be about 150 to 200 dollars plus shipping and in light of that uh, when we got this thing in at work for repair and the customer was uh, informed of its rather dangerous interior he just chose not to spend any money on repairing it and just getting another one instead so here it is I brought it home instead of putting it in the scrap heap and I figured we'd take it apart to have a bit of a giggle at the insides of it so these things are advertised as 2800 lumens 800 by 600 or in Chinese terms 1080p capable so, so it's going to have something like a 50 watt LED inside it comes delivered with uh, an actually reasonably f nice feeling remote no complaints there and pretty tactile and nice buttons on the top so actually the external build quality of this thing isn't all that bad it's a bit plasticky but it really gets uh, an okay grade Around the back, however, it gets a bit dodgier. It's supposed to have an H a HDMI and a USB port there, but uh, that's on a board that I've popped into the unit since I took this apart and I'll just diagnose it at first. We've got the power... Cautions. Please read the manual careful before using the projector. And it's also got a VGA input component. Apparently... So it's DTV ATV, so it's probably got a digital tuner, I suppose that's a nice touch. And a USB port for something else. So let's uh, reveal the horror by actually lifting the lid off of this thing. So uh, for starters, this board was actually quite well mounted into the device. It's supposed to sit like that, but I took it out in order to get a better look. It's got some processory thingy going on lots of connectors interfacing a HDMI extension which leads uh, further down into the case if we flip the unit on its face we can uh, get a glimpse of the LED driver which is actually seems to be of somewhat reasonable quality and uh, the LED heatsink module in the back here with its little fan and all the rest is just uh, optics leading the light out of it but uh, the real uh, killer in this unit is the power input because if we look inside it we've clearly got a 3 pin power connector where the ground simply isn't connected and the entire plug is uh, just hot glued into the case from the inside so if you were to press a plug just a bit too hard into this thing the uh, power connector would pop inside of it and uh, that could potentially cause some rather hazardous situations since you've got 230 volts with no ground floating around in the unit and uh, that's certainly not made better by the exposed metal parts here once you get this far in the disassembly the entire thing basically just uh, pops apart on you this box is uh, very modular in design, which I suppose is a pretty nice touch. It comes apart very easily. This mount was uh, also broken from the factory, which is even better since that would mean that you could theoretically just uh, yank the power cord out and get the panel along with it. Back here we've got some uh, round thing hot glued in. Perhaps this is for another model where they had an incandescent bulb of some kind or gas discharge bulb where you're supposed to pull the bulb out and this is just my pile of screws from earlier down here we've got uh, a USB plug hot glued in place I believe this is a bracket for holding the LED in place also removed earlier and we get some more detail on the horrific power plug this is this is just really really bad they have installed it quite firmly they've used strong hot snot but yeah I'm not okay with that I'm definitely not okay with that these are just the standard 
laptop style speakers I would almost say they're too big for a laptop cheap TV speakers probably do a decent enough job and this is the actual LED module with uh, a prerequisite thermostat on the back what is that a PTC? Uh, it almost looks more like a PTC actually but uh, that's connected in series with the LED so it's clearly pr protecting the LED and here's the LED itself it seems to be a pretty standard I would say 50 watt LED because we've got uh, six strings of eight uh, chips in series which I suppose is a bit unusual and a common thing to have 10 in series but uh, th this LED is the uh, failure point of this projector I've tested it with the light power supply and it simply does not light although if I just look at it uh, up close it uh, really doesn't have any obvious flaws it's really weird actually it looks like a healthy LED now this looks like a pretty healthy LED visually to me at least no obviously exploded parts in it I think about it, uh, think about it's just some dirt on the surface yeah no broken bonding wires or anything but uh, when I tested this at work it simply would not light it all was showing completely open circuits no matter what you did to it and yeah, if we hook up to it it's got about 30 volts across it 35, 36, 40 this thing is uh, entirely open circuit no life in it whatsoever yeah, it won't even light if we PSV substrate are we getting some light there? Whoa! Ouch! Okay, so it seems we've actually got a bonding wire failure on this thing. Which kind of makes sense because we have these little ballers there on the bonding wires. So if I just poke around there, is it going to light? Well, it's the, all the dice are clearly okay because uh, that did not lit up quite fiercely, I must say, and that was uh, 32 volts at uh, 30 milliamps. Ouch, my poor eyes. So let's see, maybe. Oh! Oh, yeah. That's. That's an odd failure mode. It seems the bonding wires are just. Uh, come loose off of the actual LED connector because if I just press my finger there I can make those light up very reliably 21.5 volts at uh, 30 milliamps it seems hmm that's weird I've certainly never seen a power LED fail like this before you know with zoom right in there you can actually see how that little ball for a hand why the bonding wires just let go? I wonder what's caused that. But the metal work around the LED seems to indicate that it's run very hot, so perhaps it's just overheated it with time. But uh, it almost seems as if there's been a little spark where they let go, which has just uh, pushed the uh, potting compound out of the way. Hmm. Very odd failure mode, anyway. I wonder if we can just uh, jab a soldering iron in there and uh, fix this LED. Let's just try jabbing it once with a really hot, really big tip. I am quite certain this is not the way you are supposed to do this. In fact, I'm quite certain you are not supposed to attempt repairing broken power LEDs in the first place, to be honest. What? Hang on! We got one ray to light. We're just pressing about it while it was powered, and it seems to have rewelded itself. If I just poke it lightly, it's probably going to go off again. But we actually have life in one row there. It's, uh, well, that's certainly alive. Ah, there it goes. <laughs> okay, I think I officially ruined it there. Moving on from the LED, we can just uh, keep taking this thing apart, I suppose. The front panel seems to pop off just like a rear panel with a, a couple of screws around the bottom. Now that uh, reveals our LED drive board and the power supply. 
and that's the power supply board out which uh, actually looks to be of relatively decent quality I seem to have caused myself some damage, oh well capacitors, random Chinese brands of course so here's the piece of all stuff, wires we've got to mains input going from one of these miniature fuses there not too big a fan of those common mode choke, xcat app another common mode choke, rectifier that's actually not too bad isolation seems to be quite reasonable actually although yes, that. yeah that, that, that's a no go there we've got a little SMD cap acting as the uh, Y cap, the RF suppression cap from the primary to the secondary <laughs> uh, that's, that's not okay but other than that really they've done an excellent job with uh, isolation, we've got a very clear mains to secondary uh, isolation although, yeah there we go, another SMD cap pretending to be a Y cap and that's just a snake tracing over there and nope that's not okay really minuscule primary secondary isolation fan they've even got some tin splatter <laughs> between here oh, oh dear and with the, with the lack of grounding in this thing that's definitely an issue this thing certainly was a death trap from the beginning to the end bit of a shame though, it really had some potential going now oh, I really need to take care of that wound ouch moving on we seem to have uh, some form of a trimmer pot there, right by the LED output. So perhaps this is actually the current adjustment. It does make sense because we seem to have a, a current shunt there. No, I'm not entirely certain what uh, power rating this thing has. It says uh, 28 volts, 12 volts there, which uh, makes sense since we had an 8 LED die 2013 but uh, the pay rating of this thing really is a mystery I think the entire device is rated for 110 watts or so but with the actual LED output would be is a bit of a mystery moving further along the optics seem to pop out with uh, just another few screws this board up here is uh, like a T-con board or something along those lines it uh, went to the input board and I think it goes on down to the actual yep it goes down to the LCD panel which is uh, hiding in there so I guess we'll get to have a look at that in due time we need to get this thing out of the box first I'm not entirely certain as to whether or not I'm ever going to reassemble this thing. I already have a projector. This thing will need a new LED. And it's really just a rather nasty unit. I mean, it's an 800 by 600 projector. Not particularly impressive. The Chinese specified it for a 2 phase into 1 contrast, so I don't want to know what the real contrast ratio of it is probably not too impressive there we go optical, oh hello is that a USB to HDMI converter? so we've got uh, an extension USB lead leading to the rear panel of the unit and we've got uh, a HDMI lead coming out that's really curious I I do wonder what that is. We've got a couple more USB plugs and uh, what seems to be a power connector. It seems to be connected onto one of the USB plugs. This almost has to be some kind of like a TV stick thing which uh, you would normally just stick into the back of your TV. It certainly seems to be of that format and you've got an SD card slot and a bunch of USBs on it. I guess that leaves us with just the uh, optics module left to take apart.